वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ कमेंटेटर का कू एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी रोटेशनल मैकेनिक्स वेट इट्स नॉट एन एपिसोड ऑफ कमेंटेटर का कू इट्स गोइंग टू अपलोड ऑन शोम चैनल राइट व्हाटएवर आई थिंक इज टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी रोटेशनल मैकेनिक्स नाउ फ्रॉम व्हाट आई हैव ऑब्जर्व इज दैट पीपल रियली फियर रोटेशनल मैकेनिक्स आई डिड अ पोल ऑन व्हाट्सएप आई डिड अ पोल ऑन इंस्टाग्राम आई डिड अ पोल ऑन टेलीग्राम but uh, for from that i probably assume that you didn't see my video on inertia which two videos which i have on my channel you can check them out but only after watching this video in this video i am going to discuss how to approach questions because what i realize is that it's not that students do not know the formula it's that they do not know how to approach so in this video it would be mainly focused on how to approach a question so it will solve two problems at once number 1 how to solve questions in rotational mechanics why this video is and also number 2 this video will make your physics question solving capabilities much better so this will make your average physics score much higher on a whole so let's proceed on to the board which we have over here so from what i have realized is that to solve a question effectively first you need to read the question very carefully make sure that you are not missing out on the knots which are a huge uh, which cause a huge percentage of silly mistakes and all also make sure that you identify the keywords so the first point would be to take out as much information as you can from the question and if you feel that you are having difficulty like uh, remembering all the things together you can also like jot down in points format if you feel i i don't think it's necessary because like generally what what i used to do for time was just thinking mentally and this is i am talking about the extreme case scenario suppose you are stuck in a question and you cannot think beyond that and you have time in neat question paper what, what's mainly important is time if you are suppose solving the question paper and you get stuck in a question you are not supposed to waste 3 minutes on that question you solve the entire question paper later if you have time then you come back to the question and see how much time you a time you have and then you attend the question now in this situation i am talking about this situation only like the extreme case scenario that you have a question you have time but you cannot think beyond it so then write down what information you have take out as much information you as you can from the question so after taking out the information understand what the question wants from you so after you have understood this you need to realize what are the set of equations which can tie these thing together like you are not supposed to think out randomly in every direction you are supposed to think in a particular direction because you have less time so after understanding these points 1 and 2 what you need to do is realize what are the set of equations or the what are the formulae which tie these 1 and 2 together often what to, what can happen is that there might be a intermediate variable or a quantity for example often time serves as uh, serves as that quantity like you relate two distances with that time so often that can be a thing so you need to realize that what are the equations which can come in handy so if you can successfully go in through these three points for every question i don't think there should be any question left which you cannot solve unless there is an exceptional scenario for example the values aren't just matching up like if you see that these three you have completed these three points and it still the answers are not matching that means probably you are doing a calculation error somewhere so just chill down a bit take some 15 seconds off just breathe deeply and i think you should find the answer like unless you are completely messing up the formula so it brings us to our first thing which we are going to study study today is that whether you have the formula in mind so in this chapter of rotational mechanics what is very important is that you need to know the moment of inertia of bodies by heart now it's very much possible that you are forgetting uh, some values i'll try to uh, show some tips and tricks to remember those things okay so for example this circular cylinder right for circular cylinder uh, they are saying that uh, the zz axis that is this axis this axis has has the inertia of half m r square right so if you relate something like the disc also has half m r square now one thing uh, is to be seen is that suppose your body is extended along the axis suppose your body is extended along the axis and it's completely symmetrical like this layer this layer this layer this layer all of these layers are symmetrical then you can compress the body along that axis you can just uh, say that this cylinder is almost equal to a disc shaped like this mass m say a uh, uh, cuboid if the axis is like this if your body is parallel to the axis and is symmetrical throughout like the body is symmetrical throughout and parallel to the axis 
then you can compress the body along the axis and make your calculations easier like this would uh, give you an advantage in visualizing and also remembering the formula so now the formula which you need to absolutely keep in mind while solving questions of rotational mechanics number one you should always remember the coms where the coms of each body is located and if you see most of them are quite intuitional for example a square would have it in its center a rectangle would also have it in its center a triangle would have it in its like where the medians uh crossover uh, a circle would, ha would have it in its center most of them are very intuitional some of them are non-intuitional for example this uh, semicircle or a uh, say uh, solid uh, a solid hemisphere or a uh, solid hemisphere or a hollow hemisphere these are a bit non-intuitional so you have to memorize this okay so you have to remember the coms of everybody or you have to make your mathematical skills good enough to derive them in the exam hall if you can't remember them okay another thing which you need to memorize is the moment of inertia of all the standard bodies like for example the hollow sphere the solid sphere right uh, the cuboid the square uh, plane bodies the triangle you need to remember all of those now a small trick which i used to remember that i used to often get confused between hollow spheres moment of inertia and solid spheres moment of inertia okay so now suppose i remember one thing hollow spheres moment of inertia suppose i remember hollow spheres moment of inertia is 2 by 3 mr squared suppose that uh, it's not suppose it's the correct value so now i used to forget what the moment of inertia of solid sphere is now if you think can you tell me whether hollow sphere's moment of inertia would be greater or solid sphere's moment of inertia would be greater just without calculating like you you are not doing the integration you do not know integration how are you supposed to say if the moment of inertia of a solid sphere would be greater than or less than the moment of inertia of the hollow sphere for the for the same mass so you would say it in this way that a hollow sphere has all its particles on the periphery right how is a hollow sphere made it's it's made by having all its particles in the periphery right but how is a solid sphere made a solid sphere is made by having all its particle clustered inside right so you have some particles in the periphery but you also have many particles inside so for every particle which would be here in the periphery there would be one particle which would be inside and that's how you will add up the mass makes sense but for every particle which is on the surface here every part there is one particle which is inside which is inside the uh, peri periphery right so e each individual particle of the hollow sphere would have greater inertia than each individual particle wait i i was saying inertia all the time it's moment of inertia okay each individual particle on the surface of the hollow sphere would have greater moment of inertia than each then then the corresponding individual particle of the solid sphere so since inertia moment of inertia is somewhat like mass mass you can add for a body similarly you can add moment of inertia for a body so for every one particle in the hollow sphere there is one particle in the solid sphere which would have less inertia than it so if we go on adding isn't it very obvious that the solid sphere would end up having lesser moment of inertia than the hollow sphere so now i know that the hollow sphere now i remember suppose in the examination i remember that hollow sphere has 2 by 3 mr square as the uh, moment of inertia so for solid sphere i just remembered vaguely that it was somewhere by uh, like it was somewhere the numerator was 2 and this has to be less than 2 by 3 so it cannot be 2 by 4 obviously otherwise you would have cancelled it so this is how i remembered it it was around 2 by 5 mr square or something like uh, i often used to forget this thing so i used to remember it in this way that solid sphere's moment of inertia has to be less than hollow sphere's moment of inertia you remember one and you manipulate the other so i used to work in this way so another important set of formula which you need to know for solving questions related to uh, rotational mechanics is angular momentum so for calculating angular momentum i have generally required only two formula like it's just another variation of the same formula uh, some people also use three variations just to make the calculations easier but i have till now required only two okay so the first one is l is equal to m dot v cross r i generally use this in areas where suppose you are given a situation suppose you have given a 2d body or 3d body uh, say a, a rectangle of mass m 
going in velocity v and you need to calculate the angular momentum of this body about this point o so in such situations what you do is you concentrate this entire body into its center of mass so you assume that the entire entire body has been reduced to a point object and that is the the center of mass of that body and then you draw the r vector the position vector till this point right and you call this r vector notice that the origin of this vector is at o not the reverse the origin of the vector is at o and it's and it ends at the mass another formula which you often require is i dot omega but one thing which you need to be careful while using this formula is that the inertia of the body has to be about the axis for which the uh, angular momentum has been asked for for example suppose let let me give you an example suppose uh, you have been given a point o and there is a square say for example there is a square which makes complete circle makes a complete circle like how do i explain this like it rotates and goes like it has it has an omega to it you can understand right it's rotating and going so uh, in this way it completes the circle uh, let me just put in a few what what is this so basically the square rotates and uh, goes around this point o so now you have been told that the length of this side is a and this is a square by the way and mass is m the angular velocity of this square is omega okay so now you need to find the angular momentum of this square about point o so what many people do is that they write that the inertia of this square is m a square by 6 multiplied by omega so m a square omega by 6 is the angular momentum that is wrong why is it wrong because you have calculated the inertia of this body about this about this axis about the axis which the square is rotating you have been asked to find the inertia like you have to find the inertia about point o right so now you have to apply parallel axis theorem also along with it with it right so now let let me remove this so if we add parallel axis theorem what what will be the inertia now let me assume that this radius is r so now the inertia will become m square by 6 plus mr square right and now this would be multiplied with omega now this is correct now this angular momentum which you have found uh, is above this point o now you could have found this in another method how you could have said that first i am going to find out the angular momentum of this body like this like in this method i am going to use l is equal to m dot v cross r and then i am going to add the extra angular momentum generated due to the rotation of this body how let me explain first let us say that this uh, this body was rotating with an angular uh, angular velocity of omega so what is the velocity of this body the velocity of this body v is equal to omega r actually sorry small r the velocity of this body is omega r so if i want to write the omega of this body using this formula what would be the uh, uh, sorry if i want to write the angular momentum of this body using that formula what would be the angular momentum angular momentum would be m dot v cross r now you can very very much see that the velocity is directly perpendicular to the uh, position vector so you can as well multiply that directly so m v r m omega uh, r square right makes sense so right now we have only added according to this formula but you can clearly see like we are this term behind so how, where is this term coming from so for doing this you have like you have like what you have done is in doing this formula you have assumed that this body is not rotating this is the angular momentum if the body moves straight this is the angular momentum due to the linear motion of the body about this point o but there will be an angular momentum due to the rotation of the body right so for that you need to bring in the the angular momentum due to the inertia now the axis is this why because you have already taken the linear motion now rotational motion is limited to this body basically i am telling you how it is in taking this linear motion you have si you have shifted the frame of reference to only this body now only this body's uh, angular momentum needs to be taken care of 
So what would be this body's angular momentum since you are finding the angular momentum about this uh, center of mass? So now the angular momentum would be i omega, right? So what is the i of this body? m a square by 6, sorry, m a square by 6, multiply it with omega. What do you find? Uh, let me add m a square by 6 also. What do you find? You find m m r square plus m a square by 6 into omega. So these formula of angular momentum are just basically, we are saying the same thing but in different languages. You have to add all of them together. Like if you are doing the math correctly, all of them should give you the same answer. It's just what, what is more easy to do in that scenario. For example, in this scenario where the square is rotating about, this formula is much more easier. No, I omega is much more easier. You just calculate the inertia about this point and you put in the omega. And in case of this body where it's not rotating but traveling only linear motion, this m, v, m, uh, m dot v cross r is much more easier. So one thing which you need to realize is what formula which you will apply where. All of the formula are correct. You can apply all of them. But the calculation which would be required, you have to make the calculation shorter because time is important. So this is another uh, tip which I had to give. So let's practice a few questions and see how it goes. And the last thing which I had to say was that I will be uploading the PDF of this uh, lecture or what should I say, I shouldn't say lecture of this um, tutorial which I gave. I would be uploading the uh, PDF of this tutorial in the channel, uh, the upcoming medicos. We, I'll, uh, Shubham will probably leave the link of this in the description. You can check that out. This uh, PDF would be available there. Also, we have a corresponding discussion group with that. If you have any questions uh, associated with this video or if you want me to uh, um, talk about a particular question on, uh, on the video, then you can um, tell it in the discussion group. So thanks for watching and I guess this video has helped you and if it has, uh, please consider sharing it with your friends and as always, keep commenting. Oh wait, this is Shubham's channel. Shubham, do you have any outro?